I saw Sisu. Did you see Sisu? Who saw Sisu? Susie saw Sisu. Cecil saw Sisu. Sue saw Sisu. Sisu, a film you see? Welcome to the Cine Fanatics. My name is Robert Adams, and tonight, today, I've got a review, spoiler free, for Sisu. This is the Finnish movie that is coming out and seemingly could be taking the world by storm because this looks amazing. Uh, I've got a lot of thoughts about this. This is going to be my review for it. What is your review? Let me know down below. And please keep in mind, these are just opinions. My opinions. You have opinions. Everyone has opinions. So be nice, be kind, be courteous, and let me know what you think. Anyways, let's jump into it. Let's start off with the good things about this movie. Right off the bat, probably the number one thing I'm going to say before this movie even starts, before this review even starts, the marketing for this movie. I don't know if I've seen another movie that has had a better marketing strategy than this. For context on this, the first trailer I saw for Sisu was attached to John Wick 4. Which was brilliant. If you've seen anything, if you've seen the trailer, if you know anything about this movie, it is roughly a guy in the middle of like nowhere Finland that is, he's, he's just scrounging for gold. He finds gold. He's so happy. He's having to walk it back to the nearest bank, which according to the trailer is like 500 something miles away. So he has to get this gold a long distance. He doesn't have a car. He has a horse and a dog, and that's it. And then he comes across a bunch of Nazis who discover he has gold. So now he's having to basically John Wick his way through these Nazis, which is a fantastic premise alone. Even if you have not seen the trailer, you haven't seen anything about this, just hearing me say that probably sold you on this movie enough and is probably worth this video getting copyright struck because of all the footage I'm going to be using while I'm talking about this movie. So... That being said, the marketing is fantastic. The idea that this guy is essentially like a outdoorsman, badass, sitting there just ripping apart Nazis, defending his gold, the right to his property, and the fact that this trailer played before John Wick, which is seemingly the same kind of an idea, just in an urban setting with a bunch of assassins. Perfect. Like, that sold me right off the bat. I'm about to watch John Wick, where Keanu Reeves is being a badass, just mowing through fools. And here's this guy in the middle of nowhere, Finland, that is doing the same exact thing, but without all that technology and everything. And he's just using his bare hands, just going at it. And I'm like, sold. Absolutely. The other thing for marketing that I really like in this was the commercial that has popped up about this and obviously again the trailer commercials everything are like this is from the producers of John Wick so you really know that these guys know what they're doing as far as this kind of quality of movie the commercial that I see playing before all the YouTube uh, videos is saying like but yeah there's a cute little dog in this which there is it's an adorable little dog but what about the dog you're comparing this to John Wick and we all know the dog doesn't make it through the first John Wick movie and it's like it's okay y'all the dog survives. And I love that commercial. I know y'all are seeing that up here at some point. I'm flashing it on the screen. But it is an amazing piece of marketing material. And whoever the geniuses were who came up with this, kudos. Y'all sold me on the movie. I came to watch the movie. And that is exactly what we got. And I am happy that the dog lived. Again, this is a spoiler-free review. But, I mean, they put it in the stupid commercial. So, <laughs> it must be true. And it is. The dog lives. As far as the story goes, this is an easy watch. You don't really need to know anything. Uh, you just know that this guy, he's collecting gold and he's having a fight through Nazis. They give like a little brief little bit about the, his background, which I'll get into that here in a little bit. But otherwise, you don't need to know anyone's name. This movie very clearly points out who the protagonists and who the antagonists are. And you just go with it. And I absolutely love it. I love a movie that allows me to easily just dive into the world. And with very little of anything, just follow the story and just enjoy the movie. And this movie does that perfectly. 
Uh, this movie does have, again, a lot of comparisons to John Wick and Inglorious Bastards. A lot of people I see are comparing that, comparing it to Inglorious Bastards, uh, mainly probably because of the Nazis uh, involved in this movie. But I will also say this movie feels very Tarantino-esque. It has chapter markers in there. So it's telling you we're at chapter one, the gold, chapter two, the Nazis, chapter three, landmines. And like it goes through each one of these chapters and it does it very in the same feeling as what Quentin Tarantino gives you in his movies uh, it's definitely got a very strong cinematic feel to this this is easily if you would have told me that Quentin Tarantino did this movie I probably won't believe you because there's not many feet shots in this movie, but otherwise I would tend to believe that this is very Tarantino-esque it's got a very cinematic feel to it the violence is hyper violent as you may have seen in the trailers where people are stepping on landmines and they just up and explode and body parts go flying. Very Tarant Tarantino-esque, and I am here for it. I love it. Uh, that was fantastic. Also, speaking of the cinematics of this, one thing you don't get from the trailer is the cinematic feel. The cinematography for this movie is so gorgeous. They're in the middle of nowhere, BFE Finland for all intents and purposes. There's not really anything that looks good, but it looks good. They found a way to make it look good, which is why I'm doing reviews on YouTube and not a cinematographer myself, but it looks super interesting. They've done, there's so many shots in this movie that I don't know how they pulled it off, what they did with it. There's one particular shot where they're underwater for a brief bit and just even though it's completely unrealistic, you're not going to get that kind of shot where they were at. It's still beautiful. And there's little things that, like, you have to suspend some disbelief in there. When they see the gold, the gold is giving off a glow to it, which actual gold does not do. And kind of going back to talking about it looking like Tarantino, it looks like if you've seen Pulp Fiction when they open the briefcase... You got that golden glow. The gold in this movie does that. Every time someone's looking at the gold, you see that golden glow on their face, uh, which gold is not providing its own light. It's not its own luminescent thing. Uh, so, yeah, stuff like that, they, they took some liberties with creative liberties, and I like it. I think it adds to this movie, especially, again, taking place in the middle of nowhere. There's not a whole lot to actually look at that's interesting. So, absolutely gorgeous. See it on the big screen just for that reason alone. Otherwise, yeah, this movie is, it is bloody, it is gory, uh, there's a lot of cringe-inducing moments that are a lot of fun, uh, it, it was great seeing it in a theater full of people and hearing everyone, like, cringe and all at the same time, I loved it, uh, so definitely good there. Let me get into some of the bad parts with this. Some of the bad is it is a little slow at times, which is a weird thing to say, seeing how this movie is an hour and a half. It's not one of these, like, two-hour-plus epics that have been coming out recently. And I, please, please don't take this as I'm complaining that the movie's too short. No, I absolutely love that this movie was as short as it was because it allowed me to be able to do a double feature with going to see Evil Dead Rise right after it. So, absolutely love that. So, thank you for being an hour and a half. But there's just some periods in, like, the flow of the movie. You get into, like, some of these action action scenes and you're like, go, 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 yes, yes, yes. And then it just kind of, like, dies for a bit. And there's, like, a good long lull in there before it picks up any action again. I get it. The idea is, like, some of these were trying to see uh, your protagonist, Atami, uh, like recover, bandage himself up and stuff after the last action scene before he gets into another one. It makes sense, sure, but it just it, it it really detracts away from the flow of that action going, going, and going. And this is something that I feel like, in comparisons to John Wick, is definitely something that you don't see in those John Wick movies. When the action gets going, it pretty much stays going. There might be some blips in between the action where characters are talking. But it's usually like very short before John Wick is on to like the next goal, the next thing he has to do. And they don't do that in this movie. This movie is like Atami is bandaging himself. He's recovering. He's sitting. He's hiding. He's waiting. The Nazis are all stupid and confused because they're fucking Nazis and they're stupid and confused. That's the way the flow of this movie. You have these fast, hard-hitting action beats and then 
quiet for a while. And I feel like that kind of detracts. Like, I would like the action a little bit more closer together, but I understand that we need to see some of this lull for the understanding of how this movie's going to work. Otherwise, a lot of people definitely wouldn't take this movie serious. That being said, I do kind of wish there was a little bit more character development on Atami himself. Uh, like I said, there's a little bit of, like, a passing line. Uh, Nazis are talking to each other. They're telling, like, th one of them is telling the other that this guy is basically a badass. He decided not to participate in fighting anymore. He's through with wars. He does whatever he wants, and he's referred to as the immortal. So good luck killing him. Like, that's basically all the backstory that we get on this guy. And I would have liked to have known, like, a little bit more, like, a little more heartfelt and stuff. Maybe. I don't know if this is a movie that would lend itself to a sequel, but if it does, I hope we get some more of that information because I'm game. I am super hyped if they decide to do a sequel to this. Uh, again, this dude is awesome. I love the actor in this. Uh, you got Jorma Tomilia, and yes, I had to look that up, and I absolutely apologize if I butchered that. I have a hard enough time with the English language, uh, much less trying to pronounce a name that's Finnish. But yes, he did an amazing job in this movie. I love his performance. Very stoic, very just leave me the hell alone, and I want to leave him the hell alone, but I enjoyed watching his presence. He has great screen presence. I enjoyed watching everything he did in this movie, and his dog is really cute, too. Anyways, that's going to be my thoughts on this movie. Uh, let me know when you see it uh, what your thoughts are. Did you enjoy this movie? Did it feel very John Wick-esque to you as well? Just adding a little bit more cinematography. A, just a lot more fleshed out. So a lot more of an artistic John Wick movie is what I would call it. Um, if I'm going to rank this movie out of 10, 10 being the highest, I am probably going to call this movie an 8. It's a fun movie. It's a great movie. I am eager to watch it again, just a little bit slow in places. And with someone like me who has really bad ADHD, I kind of like things to pick up a little bit, but not a criticism of the movie. That's not the fault of the people who made it. But it's just the way I like to enjoy movies. So if you're the same way, let me know down below in the comments. Again, once you see this movie, let me know what you think down below in the comments. And come follow us. We're doing some fun, interesting things over here. While you're down there, hit that like button. Hit that subscribe. Come back and see what all it is we're doing. Follow us on social media at Twitter, on, on Twitter and Instagram at The Cine Fanatics. You can follow me personally at Robert Adams MLP on Twitter, Instagram, Letterbox, and YouTube.com slash at Robert. Adams MLP. As for this review, thank you for watching. We'll see you in the next one. Later. I saw Sisu. Did you see Sisu? Who saw Sisu? Susie saw Sisu. Sisu saw Sisu. Sisu Su saw Sisu. Is Sisu a film you see? Let's try it again. I saw Sisu. Did you see Sisu? Who saw Sisu? Susie saw Sisu. Sisu saw Sisu. Sue saw Sisu. Is Sisu a film you see? I like that one. That was good. Let's try one more time. I saw Sisu. Did you see Sisu? Who saw Sisu? Susie saw Sisu. Sisu saw Sisu. Sisu saw the 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 the.